Okay, everyone. Now we are going to start the actual materials for our course. It starts from the very first page of chapter one of my book. Right, it's page five and page six of my book, where we will begin with these two words. Thing and property. Now, I just remember one thing before I start. Chapter 1 is boring. It is also very dry. It doesn't have much life. It doesn't have much life example or real life examples in it. Alright. But I have, we have to get through chapter 1. Because chapter 1 contains basically a set of meanings to important words that we use in this subject. Important because these are the words we use in almost every class. So you have to know the specific legal meanings to these words because we use these words in every class like thing and property. right? In normal English language, they may mean the same thing. They may have the same meaning. But in law, they don't have the same meanings. So I would just maybe say in week three or week two or any of our classes, I'll just use the word property, right? A contract to buy property. Well, what exactly does property mean? When you say a contract to buy property, well, what, what exactly does property mean? Right? Or a, a movable thing. What, what exactly is a thing? So these are the kind of words, or you can say a glossary of words that chapter one goes through. It's very boring. But just try to be patient. This is what I request of you. Try to be patient for this first chapter, even though it's a bit dry and boring. You'll get more interesting as we proceed on to chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book. Uh, I do not cover every single chapter of the book because the book is on Thai business law. Though I'm covering some chapters of it and also... For those of you who is thinking, oh, this is uh, international business law. Why Why is he talking about Thai law? Why is he using a Thai business law book? Um, I'm not teaching the Thai business law. I repeat, I am not teaching the Thai business law. I'm covering the chapters in the book because in principle, in terms of the principle, in terms of the legal concepts, all right, they are pretty similar throughout the world. If there are any differences comparing that particular Thai business law with that of a, an, another country, say for example a country in the common law system, I will highlight it to you. Alright, so. Okay, let's start with a, the two words there on page 5. Alright, you have the word think. And you have the word property. These are two words that we use in almost every class. Right? The legal meaning of the word think simply refers, as it says in the book, they use the word corporel. Corporel. What does it mean? It means something which has a form. Something which has a form, it is tangible, you can touch it, you can feel it, it has a shape, right? It's physical. Corporal. That's a thing. Right? A tangible thing. Having a shape and a form. You can carry it, it around with you. Now we come to property. Now, property is very all-inclusive. Property deals with both in core sorry, I left out an R here, right? Incorporeal and also it deals with corporeal. So property 
refers to some thing that you can touch, you can feel, it's tangible, it has a form, it has a shape, and also something that you cannot touch, you cannot feel, it doesn't have a shape. It's intangible. For example, intellectual property. Right? A copyright is a right. It doesn't have a form. It doesn't have a shape. You can't carry it. It's not tangible. Right? A software program is a property. It's not a thing. It's a property. Because the software program is not corporeal. It's incorporeal. It's intangible. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a form. You cannot touch. You cannot feel. You cannot carry it around with you. Right? Rights, any kind of rights, it's not just intellectual property right like copyright, any kind of right, ownership rights. Okay, if I'm the owner of a condominium, the condominium is mine. I have the right to use the condominium. I have the right to do whatever I want with the condominium. This right is a property. A right is a property because it's incorporeal. All right, gas is incorporeal as a property. Okay? So, we use, in law, we use the word thing to specifically refer to something that is tangible or corporeal. And property to refer to things that are corporeal and incorporeal. Like software program. Example, I write it. Software program. Right, or another one is ownership right. The right of the owner. Right is also incorporeal. Is that a property? Okay, now, next thing. I think it is corporeal is further divided into is further divided into two what we would call a movable thing and a and an in movable thing Alright, or in Thai you call Sangha Limasap and A Sangha Limasap. Okay, the Thai word for think is Sap. The Thai word for the thing for the for for think is Sap, and for property is Sapsin. Right, like intellectual property Sapsin Tan Panya, Sapsin Tan Panya. Okay, property from the brain, not something that's tangible, not something that's corporeal. All right, back to here. Sanghalimasab and Sanghalimasab, movable thing and immovable thing. All right, let me just write the word thing here. Now, what is the difference between these two? Now, the obvious difference is, of course, right here, differences. The obvious difference is, of course, this one, you can carry it, you can move it around, this one you can't, like a piece of land, or a condominium, or a house, it's immovable, it's asangha. That's the obvious difference. But there are other, there are a few other subtle differences, as in these differences are not so clear to people from the outside of the thing. When you're looking at the thing, right, you think, okay, this is a chair, therefore it's a movable thing. Right? There's a plot of land, therefore it's an immovable thing. Yes, that's the obvious difference. But there are also other hidden, or you could say, 
سطو differences between the two. Why am I going to look at these differences soon? Because they are very important in terms of the law, right? I will look at these uh, subtle differences. There are uh, four of them uh, in the next part. That's all for this part.